Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Summon. And in this week's episode, we're going to be talking about something we see on the internet all the time. In many of the Facebook and other forums, there are questions about whether you should lift your trailer or not. It's gotten to the point where my people are saying, hey, I just put down the down payment on my Airstream. I guess the next thing I need to do is buy a lift kit. Correct. We want to analyze the situation and see whether it is indeed necessary. Yes, and we're going to do it using math in true love sub and fashion. We're not just going to make our own impressions. However, if you wait to the end of this video, we will definitely give the pros, the mm -hmm. cons, and love subbin's opinion as to whether you need to lift your Airstream. So stay tuned. Let's get into it. The first measurement you're going to do to determine if you should lift your trailer or not is basically what I call the hitting the rock on a BLM land kind of measurement. And that's the easier one to do. And this is for those individuals that think they're going to take their trailer off road to, you know, the hit the regions of nowhere all over the U.S. in back places and stuff like this. And they're worried about hitting rocks or something, some other obstruction or something like that. And so there might be other places on the trailer that are lower, but the one that I'm going to worry about is the first one that would hit would be our water tank, which sits right in front of the rear axle. So even though my jack stand might be about the same height or my equalizer uh, bars might be a little bit lower, that's what I worry about because it runs the full width of the trailer. The other things like, say, my equalizer bars, I could always steer around, but this is the one that I'm going to worry about if I hit it too hard. So let's go ahead and take that first measurement and see what we are have. Looks to be about uh, just over nine inches. Now, if you can see... There's something lower than that. There is something, and that's my water drain valve. I think on newer Airstreams, comment below if you've got a newer Airstream, but I think those are plastic fittings now on the side. So that may not affect you, but on mine it's lower. But so, again, you know, I'm going to go with the fact that I could steer around that or something like that. I, I could avoid that, or it's just bad luck. The odds of something hitting that particular point... It's are... almost 100% according to Murphy's <laughs> Law, but realistically it's the full width of the trailer that I would be worried about hitting a rock on off-roading situations. That's the first measurement. Sounds good. Even though your biggest concern might be your water tank, which runs the full width of the trailer, you also have to be concerned if you do have a spare tire. Now, when we bought our Airstream, spare tires were optional equipment because you can actually, on a dual-axle Airstream, of course, just drive on three wheels if you blow out a tire, which, of course, we've never blown out a tire. Um, but the spare tire is also a little bit lower, so let's go ahead and take a measurement of that real quick. But it doesn't run the entire width. But it would be less, it would be harder to dodge. That's about six and a half inches. Okay. So even though the water tank's at nine inches, the spare tire doesn't run the entire width of your trailer, but nevertheless, it is lower. So you do have a chance of hitting the spare tire as well. Uh, you can see my equalizer is also taller. Now, question, does it matter where the item that you're worried about hitting is on your trailer versus the front versus the middle? Well, I'm assuming you're, you're trailering somewhere. I'm assuming you're driving and you're moving forward. So you're going to hit the front things first. And that assumes, of course, too, that you can't steer around it or drive around it. Uh, so, yeah. So it does matter. It does matter. Okay. This next measurement is even more fun because we get to use math. And this is the de uh, departure angle. And this is for people who have steep driveways or are concerned about, say, uh, gas station on ramps or something like this in which the back of your trailer is going to scrape. This is the most common reason, at least I hear, on the internet as far as why people choose to raise their trailer. And you're going to do that by getting two dimensions and then we're going to go inside and do some math. The first dimension you want to take is from the middle of your rear tire, or if you have this, obviously just one tire, all the way back to the lowest point in the rear part of your trailer, which is for us is that little triangle thingy. Some people put skid wheels on those. We don't have them because we've never actually, to our knowledge, hit bottom ever in 20 years. So then we're gonna get that dimension, which is, looks to be about 70 and a half, 70.5 inches. And then we're gonna go ahead and measure the height at our little back part here, which is about eight inches. Okay. So we've got, 70.5 and 8 inches. Those are the two dimensions we're going to enter in our computer. So what are we doing out here? So for this particular dimension, this is the how to determine if you can, what the slope of your driveway is. So on my Ford, 
it's got an inclinometer on the off-road section. Uh, if you GMC and Chevy and Ram guys want to comment, or folks, as to whether their trucks also have that capability, go ahead and leave a comment below. But for us, the Ford just shows it, as you can see here. But if you don't have that capability, here's how you can get that measurement. So we're going to put out 10 feet on our tape measure. We're going to use a level to make sure it's level. And then we're going to get the distance as it goes back 10 feet. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that. So you're going to come back here. I'm going to lift this and you're going to measure the height okay. with this. It's about five inches, five and a half. Five and a half? Five and a half. Okay. Oh, jeez. Ow. <laughs> This is real filming. <laughs> Plus you have to take into account that. Okay. <laughs> oh, and by the way, even though she was less than grateful, comment below if you think that this isn't the cutest hairdo of like all time. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and do some of these calculations with regards to the departure angle of the Airstream as well as the angle of our driveway. So you can see here I'm on this Omni calculator and you can find these trigonomic uh, calculators all over the internet. I just chose this one. I'll include a link in the video description below, but um, you can find these anywhere. Let's go ahead and figure out what that departure angle of the Airstream is. So I think we said it was eight inches tall by 70.5 inches. That's your B. So you can see here we have an angle right there of just about six and a half degrees. So that would be the departure angle of our Airstream. So therefore we would scrape bottom and we should lift if we actually had anything greater than six and a half degrees. Now let's go ahead and redo this, but with a lifted Airstream and see what the difference is. So instead of eight, we're going to have 11 inches. And now you can see we go up to about 8.8 .8 degrees. So from six and a half degrees to 8.8 .8 degrees. And so you can determine whether you think that's worth uh, lifting your Airstream or not in our particular case. Now, of course, the shorter Airstreams are going to have much higher angles of departure and the longer ones like the 33s and 30s with um, very long distances between the wheels will have shorter angles or less angles. Let's go ahead and look at our driveway. Our driveway we said was 5.5 inches and our distance was 10 feet, so 120 inches. And you can see the angle of my driveway is 2.6 degrees. So, you know, at 6.6 .6 degrees, we're well within our ability to back up our driveway. But those are the calculations you can do to determine if you should be lifting your Airstream. As I alluded to earlier, the shorter Airstreams definitely had an advantage in the departure angle over the longer Airstreams. You can see here I have a 16-foot Caravel and a 27-foot International. I chose not to use the longer Airstream like the 30 or 33 foot classics because Airstream puts truck tires on those trailers and I believe that they're a larger outer diameter on the tire which would change things a little bit and I kind of wanted an apples to apples comparison. So as you can see here the Caravelle with that short little overhang comes in at 11.31 degrees whereas the International comes in at 6.34 degrees which is pretty stinking similar to what uh, my International came out to. So, so yeah the shorter Airstreams definitely have a pretty decent advantage when it comes to the departure angle. All right, well, there's the math. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the pros and cons. We'll start with the pro. Okay. And I'll do the first pro. The first pro is obviously what we've been talking about. You can raise your ground clearance and your departure angle so that you can have, you know, better, you don't have to worry about, say, steep driveways. You don't have to worry about big rocks. Ground clearance and gas stations, the ramps going up to gas stations. Yes. And such. So that's obviously the first pro of raising it. Mm -hmm. The second pro is that when you're doing a sewer dump, you have a higher gravity angle so that it'll be easier for you to dump your sewer and your black and your gray water tanks. Yes, and you know, you, the way I get around it is I just massage the stinky slinky, mm -hmm. but it certainly makes it better. Absolutely. All right, so let's talk about some of the cons. The first con is by raising the Airstream, you're actually increasing the surface area that's exposed to the wind mm -hmm. as you're pulling it. And that's about 8% on a three inch lift. So if you lift your Airstream three inches, you increase the overall surface area that you're exposing to the wind by about 8%. And that can affect your gas mileage 
And how it tows. Yes. So that's the first con. Right. What's the second one? The second point is it will raise your center of gravity. And Airstream designed these trailers a certain way because that was their most stable point. So if you're raising your center of gravity, you're gonna mess with that stability. And for those that have raised your airstream, it's not unsafe. We're not saying no. that you've got, you've got a horribly unsafe trailer now no. and everything. It's just, those are things that are not good. You do not want to raise the center of gravity. Unless you have to. Yeah, like or, a steep driveway or something like that. Absolutely. And you don't want more surface area. But it's, it's just some pros and cons to think about. So, have we lifted our airstream? No. No. But we haven't because in the 20 years and 94,366.2 miles of towing, I don't think we've ever scraped bottom. Mm, maybe once. Maybe possibly. once. Possibly. I don't remember. But, you know, we've never had trouble going into gas stations. We've never had trouble going into um, any type of driveway or hill. And, and I think with air streamers these days, I think people. They get into airstreaming or trailering, well, especially airstreaming because those are low. Some of the other RVs are, are pretty high. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, everybody's got this vision of they're gonna go off road and they're gonna have these big boulders that they've gotta navigate. And you know, our experience is that those times are few and far between. Even when you are off road, you usually get some type of gravel dirt road or something like that. You are rarely off in the middle of the boonies. And something to consider also before you lift it, before you even have traveled in it, just see how things go and see if you find it necessary. Yes. Don't do it like right from the get-go after mm -hmm. placing your deposit. Lifting is something I had never heard of up until about two years ago. I'd never seen one, never that's heard of one. That's sort of when it started trending. It, I, I think that's the thing they call the internet. Mm -hmm. But you know, a year, a couple years ago, Cindy bought me this excellent book called Cape Town to Cairo. It's by Lily Douglas, Douglas. Chronicles Wally Byam's caravan of 40 trailers. In 1959, they went from Cape Town, South Africa to Cairo, Egypt. On some of the worst roads that you can imagine. On all the planet. Mm -hmm. And when you look at Wally's 22 foot trailer, same size as ours, has his lifted? Nope. He didn't lift it. Right. Um, so, you know, maybe some of them were, but mm -hmm. some of the really long ones, but for the most part, uh, yeah, if he can go from Cape Town to Cairo. I think our little Airstream could probably handle it too. Yeah, I've, in some of these roads, I think we can handle it. So hey, if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we've earned a subscription, click the subscribe. And comment below if you're thinking about lifting your trailer. Because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.